Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, for those of you who weren't able to participate in yesterday's session or the full day, it was really a, an incredible day. And I've been um, enjoying a lot of the conversations that have been happening throughout the day, also a lot of conversations on Facebook and, and other areas um, to kind of drive home what we were talking about yesterday. This is not about us presenting um, answers or presenting perfection, but a commitment to really furthering these important equity issues in our community. Um, if you haven't had a chance yet, please do look um, in the Whova app under the agenda for yesterday. And if you look at some of the different sessions, there are video recordings that are already up of the opening address framing, um, the text of that, and a number of other videos. So I do encourage you throughout the day to take that opportunity to kind of catch up on some of those different recordings. I also wanted to flag, there's a section of the Whova um, app called Documents. I want to really highly plug that, recommend that people go there. We put together um, a very robust resource guide um, with feedback from a lot of the incredible people that are in this um, network and beyond around um, gender equity, um, racial equity, talking about, um, you know, in the workplace, for board members, for funders. So I want to encourage you to look at that and also to continue to give us um, feedback. So without uh, further ado, I would like to um, introduce Stacey Schusterman to provide some um, opening remarks. She is the chair of the Charles and Lynn Schusterman Family Foundation, which of course has been so supportive of SRE Network. Stacey, please take it away. Oh, Stacy, you are mute. Yes, I, I'm, I'm also like everyone calling from home. So I wanted to make sure we didn't have a lot of, uh, you know, background noise. Um, so uh, as good morning and thank you, Alana. And as Alana said, I'm the chair of the Charles and Lynn Schusterman Family Foundation. My parents uh, founded the foundation 30 years ago and I started getting involved after having um, a 25 year career in the oil and gas business, a very male dominated business. Uh, so I started getting involved uh, in the foundation in about 2014. And um, I, uh, the foundation has historically focused primarily on Jewish continuity, like Jewish renewal and grant making in Israel. And when I got involved, I added a K through 12 uh, US focus and that, was focused on low income. And over time, we basically made it very explicitly focused on low income kids of color and wanted to say, you know, this is a, um, a group that has been specifically and really purposefully because education is funded by property taxes, um, not been uh, provided equal access to high quality education. And so um, when my mom retired a couple of years ago, we brought basically both um, parts of the foundation, Jewish Israel, um, together with our US uh, non-Jewish agenda. And the timing of that actually happened pretty, um, pretty well in terms of with the Me Too movement. And when we brought the sides together, we really wanted to um, look explicitly at what are the values that we want, what has the foundation stood for, and we want, what do we want to articulate that it stands for. And our Jewish and Israel work had always been focused on inclusion and casting as wide a net possible, which as we know, historically, uh, Judaism has been a male dominated religion, but we wanted to make sure that we were capturing um, all elements of Judaism. And then in um, education, we obviously wanted to make a, a uh, quality education available to all US citizens as a right. And so with the Me Too movement, it obviously highlighted what women have known for a long time, of that women don't have equal access to power. And so uh, Lisa um, wanted us to step forward, and I'm very glad that she did, Lisa Eisen, who you heard from yesterday, uh, to basically take a leadership role in the Jewish community and help um, galvanize that we actually do something about a lack of sufficient safety, respect, and equity in the Jewish community. And she was joined by an ally, Barry Feinstone, at Jim Joseph Foundation. And they uh, built what is, as you heard yesterday, and we'll hear more today, a really impressive organization to build on work that had been done historically in the Jewish community to make the community more, um, more equitable 
and welcoming to women. And now SRE uh, fits well within a portfolio that we have been building uh, under Lisa's leadership uh, for gender and reproductive equality. Um, and the organization has uh, brought together 125 funders and organizations to talk together and to train and to put in policies to make the Jewish community recognize the importance of creating an environment where all workers, but in particular, you know, women who have not felt um, safe and respected, and then equal access to leadership and all the opportunities that men have historically had. So as funders, uh, funders play a very important role in this, not only in providing the funding, SRD's made um, $3 million of grants over the last two years, which is uh, very impressive to 30 different organizations to help provide organizations the ability to do the training um, and retooling their internal policies to implement SRE. Um, but funders also have an important voice in speaking about the importance of making these moves and saying that we as a Jewish community need to change. And there's, I think, still no recipe like in racism for how that change can actually happen successfully because on the one hand, we need to be striding and asking for the change. And we also need to bring people along to want to be allies and to want to make those changes. And so I think there is both you know, a carrot and a stick in terms of um, if we want to retain women as active members and leaders and contributors in the Jewish world, we need to include them. That's the stick. And the carrot is that data shows that more inclusive workplaces are more productive, more creative, and generate better results. And obviously, we want the Jewish community to be as vibrant and as growing as it can possibly be. So uh, I think funders can articulate that vision. And SRE and all the groups involved in it can help in implementing that. So it's been exciting that Alana joined. Um, and is helping to lead the organization uh, when it was previously led by those who founded it. Um, and uh, I'm excited about what the future holds as we continue to make the case for having workplaces that are safer, more respectful, and more inclusive of everybody. So um, I'm looking, I, like I said, I enjoyed yesterday and looking forward to today. And I'm looking forward to um, how we build together, gain knowledge, spread that knowledge, and bring more people into seeing that this is a great vision for the community as a whole. So thank you. Thank you so much, Stacy. Thank you so much for your support and for that of the Schusterman Foundation. Um, it's, it's really um, tremendous, I think, what's been accomplished so far and just so excited about um, where we're going. Yes, me too. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, so just to kind of give folks a sense of what to expect um, in terms of, of the rest of the day. So um, after this, um, uh, this opening, you're going to have the opportunity to break out into three different um, breakout groups that are going to feature some of those grantees that Stacy was uh, referencing that we've been supporting over the last two years. Um, one of the options is safety at work and at home, abuse and power and sexual harassment in Jewish workplaces and domestic violence at home. Um, there's a second session that's on respect and allyship, and a third that's on gender equity in hiring, pay, and funding. So that's what's going to be coming up um, next. After that, there will be an optional networking break. And then we're going to be bringing to you something that our advisory board um, did as a kind of group exercise at our last um, meeting in February which is we know that these issues of safety, respect, equity are not just unique to the Jewish community, that there are a lot of different faith communities. Um, there's corporations, not just nonprofits that are grappling with these. And so we put together um, a few case studies in these buckets of safety, respect, equity, real life examples. And um, folks are gonna break into groups and really grapple with some of the important questions that we've been exploring as a network and our leadership has been exploring, but using these other real, uh, real life case examples. Um, and then after that, we're gonna to come together for some um, closing remarks and also a very powerful closing blessing from a rising leader, Becky J who's a four-year rabbinical student at AHUC Jewish Institute of Religion. And I'm really hoping that you all can join us for that. 
And then something that we did a little bit different is that in theory, the conference ends then, but we're actually going to have a 40 minute session after that, what we're calling committed conversations. I know that most of us, we go to a conference, whether it's in person or virtual, and maybe we have a great experience and we tell someone it was great and they ask you, you know, what, well, what happened or what did you do with it or what are you doing next? And it's kind of just like you move on to the next thing especially in this current moment that we're in where things are just moving so quickly. So we wanted to really set this side um, set aside this time to have committed conversations, um, to get into groups. Um, there's gonna be five different options, um, including an open option, but to connect with your peers and colleagues around how you want to further that next leg of the work. So this is for those things that you've been thinking about over the last two days that we haven't addressed yet, things that we've started to touch on, but you wanna go deeper into. And so, we really want to encourage you to take advantage of that time. Um, and the other plug that I shared yesterday is there's an incredible group of people that have um, signed up to participate in this two-day experience. Everyone's juggling different things. People are gonna be coming in and out of it. Some are watching the pre-recorded content. Some are, are with us live. Go into that attendee section of the Whova app you know, peruse kind of the different folks that are in there, names that may be familiar to you or aren't organizations, and really reach out and use that opportunity to connect and build some, some new relationships. So thank you.